Wow, months go past really fast this year. I hope you and your family and friends are all doing good and taking care out there in the world. Hello and welcome to the second devlog where I update you on the process of making my dream game. I've been working on my game project quite a bit since last time and I'm more than excited to share some ideas, concepts, the game's progress, funny bugs and one of the most valuable experiences I ever had in game dev. A little hint, it has to do with paper prototyping. But before I start, let me thank you guys for the amazing response to my first devlog video. Your positive feedback was very motivating. I hope these videos will give you a similar feeling and encourage you to realize your projects. For those who are new here, it's amazing you're watching this. If you're asking yourself, what the f*** is this cartoon dude talking about? I'm making a local multiplayer city defender mech game inspired by the anime Neon Genesis Evangelion. And for the full context, you might want to watch episode 1 first. The info panel should pop up right now. And now, let me introduce you to this month's topics. We'll check out how a simple paper prototype can change everything. I'll give you more insights onto the game's concept and its core mechanics. And I've done my homework. I've researched about many existing mecha games to get a deeper understanding of what already exists out there and what works and doesn't work for players. Of course, you'll see many improvements in development, plus information about where you can learn these skills, as well as a sweet little selection of shitty bugs. All right, with this table of content set up, let's get it on. Here's devlog number two, clearing the concept. Hi, I'm a part-time indie developer and illustrator. I've gained my knowledge through thousands of online tutorials, and now I want to give something back and share these skills with you. If you like these videos, subscribe to the channel to not miss new videos coming up and if you want to support me, check out my website that contains my published games and a detailed dev blog and much more. Or hit me up on Twitter. Autumn is the most beautiful season in the Alps for me. I love the calm, sometimes almost melancholic mood the colorful valleys get. It's simply different from developing games in front of a screen for hours every day, exactly what I needed after I released my first devlog video. So I started the new monthly interval with a break. Unfortunately, I am personally very bad at letting go and relax. So in early 2020, I made an experimental anti-stress app called Nixon. I made it to help people relax in everyday stress situations and to remind everyone to take breaks sometimes. If you wanna try it out, it's free, it has no annoying ads, the link is in the description. But now back to business, when I came back from my recreation weekend, a promise had to be kept and I finally had to do a paper prototype for my game before continuing the bigger vision. I started to cut, crumble up, tear apart and glue paper and cardboard pieces together to create a little map with hills, buildings, bunkers, weapons, wooden and toy fox enemies and players made from the earplugs my girlfriend uses when she sleeps over and I snore at night. I created all elements really fast and without giving attention on detail. In fact, I worked very dirty to not make it look carefully made so that nobody is holding back while playing with it. If I'm completely honest, up to that point I had only made prototypes in the form of drawn sketches. I saw physical 3D paper models only as an alibi exercise, less as a tool. Let me tell you, after this experience, I'm lost for words how wrong I've been. When I started to make the individual parts of the prototype, questions already came up which are relevant for the gameplay. Let me give you an example. In the game, citizens will search for bunkers to hide when enemies start to attack their city. It will make a difference for the NPC AI logic if a bunker can hold a thousand people or just about a hundred. Sounds obvious, but I became aware of this by creating random sized cardboard houses. I think this has a lot to do with having a visual, tangible and modifiable representation of your idea in physical space. And it's possible to share your concepts with others. Together with a fellow indie game dev friend of mine, I've set up the map with its elements and we simulated the game's faces. He asked an incredibly smart but simple question. What is the initial situation? Translated into the game, it's synonymous with the level started. How does the scene setup look like? Where is the player standing? Where are enemies placed? Is there an introduction to the mission? And so on. Continuing on from that, we played for over two hours in this first session. Even if I told my buddy often about my plans and what the game is all about, I believe this was the first time that the concept became clear to someone else than myself. Conclusion, it's 100% worth doing a paper prototype. 
I prepared an animated concept again for you and I'd like to ask you to share your opinion on the following things. Do you understand the concept and do you have any more ideas to add to it? Everyone's opinion matters. Write your thoughts down in the comments. So here it is, the concept. Here we have a slightly edited screenshot of a place near the village where I grew up in. You can see there's a river and the terrain is mountainous. There's a city. The central area has more skyscrapers than the outer areas where mostly residential buildings are located and people live and work there. The city is powered by a so-called source. The source guarantees energy for the city and its inhabitants and is located right in the center. The source, however, unfortunately attracts enemies who are like moths to the light and want to destroy it. The reason is yet unclear. There are bunkers in which the citizens can take shelter as long as they are not full. Even while the inhabitants seek shelter, the player in their giant mechs make their move. Their task is to protect the source and at the same time keep the devastation of the city as little as possible. To support the players, different weapon types are located at strategically important spots on the map. Some of them are better for certain types of assault or defensive playstyles, others can only be operated by two players, for example tanks, where one player is driving, the other is aiming and shooting. Since the mechs need a lot of energy, they have to be charged constantly. Within the radius of certain charging stations, the players can move freely. If they move outside, they only have a limited time to perform action. The winning condition is the following. The players win if they defeat all enemy units or the boss monster. The players lose if the enemies destroy the source or both players in co-op mode and one player in single player mode gets destroyed or runs out of energy. To make it attractive to not just camp in the city center and protect the source, I thought of making a system where the rewards for each mission relies on how much sympathy the citizens have for the mech pilots. If a lot of buildings get destroyed by the enemies or the players themselves, the mood of the population will change and you'll get less rewards or even have to pay for rebuilding the city with the in-game currency. That's the overall concept that is, I want to point this out, based on the paper prototype. And now it's your turn. Do you understand the concept and do you have any more ideas? Share all opinions in the comments, please. Now let's jump over to a little research I did during the past weeks. Making the game feels super exciting, but knowing where you stand compared to other games on the market will become more and more important during the process. Knowing some facts about your genre and widely used or niche mechanics will help to guide the development towards a unique experience for the players. I've checked out these eight games, disclaimer, I mostly watched gameplay videos and didn't play all of them, and try to understand and write down what makes the game stand out and also where is space for improvements in my opinion. Putting feedback back into words that describe what you feel as accurately as possible is not easy. In the last episode I mentioned at some point that the important keyword was fun, which in retrospect is a very banal and meaningless statement. Therefore, and this is a good practice to be more precise linguistically, I have tried never to use words like interesting, exciting, funny, good, bad, boring or tedious because they do not describe a solution or a precise feeling and are therefore not very useful as feedback. So for the sake of time let me go through three of the games very briefly but on point. The first one is Anthem from Bioware from the year 2019. This title didn't get the best reviews due to being a repetitive looting hell but I want to point out what it does somehow pretty pretty good. Controlling the mecha suit, for example, it makes you feel really heavy and powerful through its visual feedback system. It pushes you back when you're shooting. The impact effects combined with controller rumble, the animation when you fall and hit the ground or the fighting itself with smart paced camera shake all adds up to this immersion of steering a heavily armed robo suit. Also, the open world's terrain consisting of valleys and canyons and caves let you, that way, want to find out what's behind each mountain. The environment itself seems to tell a story just by its unique design. If the javelin is damaged, it can be revived by another player, which enforces team play and I consider a very cool mechanic. Oh, I didn't want to use words like cool, so forget that. 
Besides being a looting shooter, the beautifully designed wildlife and underwater segments of the world are pointless as they are not meaningful for the story or the gameplay. The mission design is very repetitive and the enemies are not different enough. Two species of humans, all with guns, doesn't surprise you anymore after two hours of play. The customization is also way too limited. Loot could be used here to craft armor and guns, but it isn't. Let's go to the second title I want to point out. It's Mech Warrior 5 by Piranha Games, also from 2019. In this game, the mechanical components and their stats are communicated to the player, which is important as this title focuses on mechanical accuracy. It seems that parts of the mechs can be lost while fighting, the damage is even visible in-game, and those lost parts need to be replaced in the hangar, which brings me to the second point. The hangar shows impressively how huge the mechs are and the details of the mechs themselves. The customization options are high and very individualized. In this game, the players can also choose what the reward shall be in the end of the quest. Is it money, resources or even help to repair damaged mechs? I think this is pretty unique as a mechanic and adaptable to the player's needs. Also the destructible buildings look believable, which gives me a feeling of immersion. It makes sense that the base of a huge building stays while the outer shell gets destructed on the first attacks. In my current game, the whole buildings just explode. The levels are repetitive, just like the mission design meaning walk to point A on the map and do B. Surprisingly, the target group for this game seems to be quite small. Maybe just fans from the franchise stick to it while new players jump over to some of the flashier games out there. Like the next one. The last game I want to show you is Mass Builder by Vermilion Digital and it's still in early access on Steam. This game looks like the dream of every mecha fan when it comes to customization. It's crazy how deep the developers went into detail for the customization of the mechs and all their parts. The art style of the game looks very well stylized and coherent and I apply this statement to everything from the mechs themselves over the menus and the battle UI. On the other hand, I think the battles that seem to be set in a kind of open arena look repetitive and the variety of enemies is small, but this might just be subject to change. Watching the available footage gives me the feeling that the mechs are not huge and massive, but rather toys. I think that has to do with the design of the environment that only contains oversized rocks and the scale of the environment textures that are too large as well and create a mismatching perception of scale units to me. Did you play any mecha genre game that I've missed? What is special about that game in your opinion? Let me know in the comments. Looking at these games and also other media, one separation cannot be overlooked. The one between the humanoid, warrior-like Japanese mechs that remind me of samurai in their armor and on the other hand the more mechanically correct version of mechs, let's call it that way. While the representation of the individual parts, their realistic mechanical behavior is important for this one, the fighting action is very crazy and exaggerated over the top with much more room for fantasy in the warrior-like. For the right one, the the design makes it clear where and for what purpose the mech is used, while the left one seems to have just more personality. I do prefer the heroic humanoid version, as you can guess from the manga reference I have. So that was it about my little research. Now let's see how the development went on since last time. Again, the following process is tightly bound to what I've learned by making the paper prototype. The goal was to create a, let's call it MPG, which means minimum playable game. I use this made up term to describe the minimum that is needed to have a playable version of the game that contains a winning condition, a losing condition, the game world, interactable elements and visual feedbacks for players to know how they perform. So even though I'm very dedicated to making good designs, I made some bad looking health Mac UI and source UI. Just for now it will be redone in the future. Both indicate how close the players are to win or lose the game. It is very simple. Just link the fill amount of the images with a health value via script. It also changes colors to more alarming schemes when the values are low and the max UI matches the selected colors. I added a simple game over screen with the possibility to start over again. Easy and no big deal. By the way, if you want to get started in learning how to make games hands on in Unity, check out my complete series where I teach you the basics of game development and coding. If you follow along, you'll have a finished game in the end made on your own. 
So next, I tackled the difficult part of creating a minimalistic enemy AI that searches for the source but dynamically changes focus on either the player or other elements in the world. But first, I lost myself in making the source and the energy stations look cooler. Then both the source and the energy station got a health system that goes into the existing building logic. To make the enemies find their targets, I used a flow field for pathfinding and combined it with a field of view for each individual enemy. The enemy will now walk towards the target and avoid obstacles in its way. They also slow down when crossing, for example, a river. This could become handy for some future environments. And the enemies have a far and close distance attack animation. It was so complicated to get all the systems running together and they still don't work perfectly. If I show you my plan for the weeks, you'll see how long it took me to finish all of this. So if you think game development is just a whole bunch of fun, let me tell you the truth. Making games can tear you up inside and make you desperate. Sometimes you want to cry and throw your computer out of the window. It is important to take a short break, go out into the fresh air, even sleep about it and don't let it get you down. Developing games is not worth breaking yourself, no matter on which level. So I went on by adding more animations to the Mac and doing other stuff until I reached again a dead end. All the calculations from each enemy summed up and impacted the performance. I decided to dedicate a few days just on cleaning the code and find out about performance issues using Unity's profiler. It's a good tool to find what causes the peaks in performance. Because the video is getting already a bit long and I want to show you some funny bugs, I think I'll leave it here. But if you are interested in fixing performance issues, let me know and I'll dive deeper into the topic for you in a separate video. So I promised you some shitty bugs that came up during development and here they are, my top worst bugs compilation for you. Now let's see how the game plays in action, hopefully with less bugs. The test scene just started in local cope mode. As you can see, the UI matches the max colors and both players are now trying to defend the yellow source from the few incoming enemies. The source health is going down when the enemies successfully hit it and the enemies find their target and are able to change focus. I added some more animations to the models and a game over screen. The game over screen is different depending on what causes the game over. For December I plan working a bit more on my existing game Country Ball Potato Miami where I'm currently making a multiplayer mode. The download links for the game are in the description, it's as well free, so if you want go check it out. For this project I think the environment in the game could look much better and I'll definitely do an evaluation of the current state and work on the player itself. Anyway, there's much to come, so I hope to see you again in December, but for now, please feel free to ask anything or suggest me anything for the upcoming videos. And if you like what you saw, please leave a like and share it with your friends, again it would mean the world to me. And now, have a great day everyone and take care. See you next time. Cheers!